Okay. Uh, sorry. We try to start uh, with a little delay, and uh, also uh, I introduce myself. I'm Fabio Tolledi. I am a director, and also I am the president of the Italian Center of uh, International Theatre Institute. And also I coordinate, and also my experience is connected, especially in uh, theater in conflict zones. And then with me is Nora, please. Yes, my name is Nora Amin. I am Egyptian. I live in Berlin since three years. I'm a, a performer, theater director, choreographer, and writer. And that's enough. Okay. <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> it's, it's not uh, that. Okay, the, the topic of the meeting of today is uh, Eurocentrism is the new colonial and also is a, it's a provocation in a certain way, but also it's very important to consider that we live in a context of a global conflict and also we are not able to recognize that the conflict is global, that always is connected with other countries also, especially in the European Union too. And this is an aspect very essential for um, my uh, sensibility. And also, uh, the conflict is based also always on some crucial elements. The first one is the uh, an idea of supremacy of one culture against other. Otherwise, there is no conflict. It's clear the conflict exists all only when we have an idea of supremacy, of something against something else. And this aspect of the supremacy of culture, that is very clear in the political and public speech in the United States and in many other very official and important level, also unfortunately in Italy in this last month, is connected with a, a very important idea and very mighty idea of the supremacy of one culture against the other one. Also, we have decided to, uh, because it's a very short the time, to launch some aspect and also to have a ping pong with uh, Nora too. So thank you for mentioning a global conflict. And I think we also share the uh, fact of working with theater in conflict zones. Um, I, I started my first project uh, about theater in conflict zones with the German ITI long ago, 2005, I guess, and it happened in Sudan. And after this, uh, I launched what is called the Egyptian nationwide uh, project for theater of the oppressed right after the revolution, uh, 2011, and it expanded into an Arab and regional network of 700 activists and practitioners of Forum Theater. And uh, my own relation to conflict now is not so much about managing conflict via theater or performance, but it is rather about the healing aspect that performance can have towards um, traumatic experiences, uh, whether um, connected to the performers, to the spectators, or to the society in general. And in this sense, and uh, due to the last two years of work in Berlin and in between, I think that this area of working with dance and trauma performance could be one organic field of exploring our um, similarities and our somehow universal shared pain that also transcends the idea of war zones because in each society there is internal wars and there is violence and aggression even within Europe, um, which can be looked upon as a colonizer of war zones, of old war zones, and could be also looked upon as colonized but by its own internal history of colonization. Sorry for being too long. <laughs> okay. 
Now, uh, it's a topic that need, of course, a very long uh, speech, not so fast, but also I, I try to uh, come back to the problem of the new colonialism, what is the meaning now of the new colonialism. Of course, I have said that uh, uh, ITI activities is connected with the chart of UNESCO that uh, was born 70 years ago. Of course, connected with the end of the Second World War and the birth of the United Nations too. The aim of the chart of UNESCO remain very important, is the mutual understanding to overcome conflict. But also, we have to consider how the world has changed until now, and also, for example, the official language of UNESCO are not enough to represent all the world. Our French, English, and also the are the language of the time in which UNESCO was born. But this is always is connected with a very huge aspect, and also the language and the languages, and also the work of theater is connected with this awareness. What is the problem of the languages? When we will work in the next month in Burkina Faso, usually we say, uh, what is the language of Burkina Faso? The theatrical language remain the French, and the Ministry of Culture is the Ministry of Culture and Francophony. This is a, con is a very clear consideration of the condition. And also, uh, yesterday, and also when I'm walking in the very interesting topic of the each tables, arrives an element of the economical uh, condition of the artistic work. But the economical condition also has influenced always the condition to making art, to making an art experiences. And this is very clear that the conflict, the global conflict is not a concept uh, uh, not concrete, is a very concrete, is connected with the dimension of military intervention of the countries of European Union, also Germany, France, and Italy, and the United Kingdom, not only United States, not only the division of polarism uh, of Soviet Union and uh, United States of until the end of the 80s. This framework is very important to consider that we are the connected with an heritage in which the superiority of the European culture continue to be very strong. Usually, and I pass the word to Nora, when, uh, it's very strange, when I say in my university in South Italy, uh, where I'm going to, to work, I say, ah, I have a, a workshop in Paris, I have a workshop in Berlin, I say, ah, very interesting. Then if I say, I have a workshop very important, very strong in Tunis, ah, is it a danger? This is the feeling. It's not is important. It's danger. And also, this attitude continues to be very present in our daily life. Please, not. So, going back to the supremacy and the supremacy of language, I, um, I, I think of. Um, <laughs> I, I think I have a struggle with the supremacy of the Western aesthetics uh, in performance. And uh, f for me, this is maybe the most important uh, challenge I have to face as an artist, if I am an artist. <laughs> and um, because on one hand, uh, it, uh, this kind of aesthetic <laughs> Western colonization of the stage is, uh, was present for me when I was in Egypt already, where the ideal uh, for the stage is the Western and probably European uh, form of performance. So we create and we live with the ideal of the colonizer and with the eternal feeling of being inferior and struggling to act like the French and the Italians. And, um, and then even looking at our own forms of theater as folkloric, which means not modern and not available for the modern international market. And then we struggle and try to make also some contemporary forms with dance. There is another struggle also with colonizing the, <laughs> the Egyptian bodies by a technique and Western vocabulary that was really born out of a history, 
out of a history and aesthetics and culture and everything, and then denying our own physicality and daily, everyday life struggles and resistance and, and physicality, really. Um, and how to deal now with this hope of liberating the aesthetics of the stage, of uh, creating performances uh, that, on one hand, the um, theater market does not label as exotic or like with an expectation of some kind of belly dance or oriental dance on stage, or with an expectation of this like semi-retarded part of the world, what kind of theater they are presenting. This equality, this equality in looking at creativity and artistic work is very, very, very rare. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry for talking too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, I, I want to use uh, an example very interesting that is connected with the economical condition in uh, Europe, uh, especially in Italy, we have an explosion of the performance of monodrama performance. It's connected with the very difficult condition of the uh, cost of the company. But all, and in this way, start to be a very strong uh, label, the uh, storytelling dimension. When I've started to study theatrical studies and uh, at university, uh, I have read many, many times in many, many very important book, also very good book in a certain way, that in many countries, in many areas, in many continents, doesn't exist a theater, doesn't exist a, a, tradition, a traditional form of theater. But we know that the storytelling comes from many, many cultures. Is a, typical dimension of the theatrical expression. But also, in a certain way, we have transformed this, and also in the political uh, telling, start to be storytelling a dimension very important. Something connected with the dimension of a new proposal for the new scene. And we, are forgot we have forgotten that the storytelling is connected with the practice of the circle, not in a closed room, but in a square or in a courtyard in which we start to tell a story and we start to make theater for the community. This is the first aspect. The second aspect that I think that is strongly connected is connected with the dimension of the audience. The, all the politic policies of cultural things connected with the audience development has received an idea from the United States that is connected with the commercial event connected to the theater. The audience is not the community. The audience are the public that is paying a ticket to watch a show, to stay in the entertainment. Also, the different category of the entertainment can also involve the the high cultural production, but always remain an economical product that is connected with the audience that can be reached to pay a ticket. In this sense, I think that to discuss on the new form of colonialism is also is a way to find a new strat strat exit strategy. And I think that the first answer, like for IETM, for ITI activities, is the network. Networking is the real dimension. To create a network is the first answer to overcome the idea of uh, separation and colonization of the, some, a very huge number of people. So going back to the audience, and uh, I, I think the spectators are m maybe the best uh, solution to focus on change through creating, uh, like trying to create a human bonding with each other among the performers and among the spectators and trying through this possibility of human bonding and true connection to overcome the prejudice and the political history and even the shared pain. And my experience with, 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 with this human bonding is very strong. I can quickly mention two examples, if it's possible. 
Um, and um, one example is uh, related to creating one-on-one -on -one performance, Earthport, which was created in Berlin. Uh, it, it has a cast of uh, German-Egyptian uh, performers, and it includes um, the scenes are designed as encounters between a single spectator and a single actor, and then rotations uh, according to a certain calculation. In this encounter, there is a really um, intense possibility of exchange and of seeing, looking, recognizing the spectator as human, as a person, as a person with a history and emotions and presence, and a person who is able also to shape the encounter with, with, the, with the actor. And it also gives the uh, uh, other possibility that the actor becomes also human, not an object for performance, not a puppet, not a fictional character. And if we can, I mean, include in the topic of change just the little intimate, personal, uh, momentary changes that happen to us during this one and a half hour of performance, then I believe it is possible. It is possible to, through performance, decolonize our knowledge of each other and retrieve our humanity. And just the other example very quickly is a solo performance. This is not one-on-one. -on -one. But in the solo performance, and going back to the monodrama, and it is called Resurrection. It is made as a dance ritual uh, to give tribute to theater artists who died in a fire in Egypt in 2005. But this ritual expand to embrace all the uh, survivors or victims of oppressive systems. And then at the end, we have a chance to put the oppressive systems <laughs> away and just recognize that we are alive and together and as equal human beings. Okay. The other two things that I want to propose to you is, the first one is connected, uh, the network live, can be very effective through the mobility of the artists. This is an aspect essential too, and we know very well that the globalization has created a free commerce of the goods, but not a free commerce of the artists. And the condition of the artist is very, very important and is connected with this dimension. We have to launch a lot of campaign to be free, to move from one country to another. This is very important, is essential. And also I think that the network can work in this, in this direction. The other aspect is connected more with the artistic dimension, is connected with the mother tongue experience. The meeting with the different cultures can be very rich through the practices of mother tongues that we can meet every day in each places. And also I think that is very essential, also my theater try to do in this way, and many, many other uh, artistic form, theatrical form or perform, of performing arts are connected with this dimension of mother tongue practice. It's very important to give the full dignity of this expression, and also we have to continue to increase our efforts in this direction too. For me, the big hope is friendship. <laughs> and I, I think the, even the biggest projects of cooperation and networking, if they do not include a basis of friendship and mutual understanding, so maybe they will just recycle the same system again. Maybe, yeah? I just say maybe. And I hope we get out of uh, the IETM meeting as friends with new basis for equality. And maybe this will be the change that we can do among us, those 100 or 200 people. Thank you. Yes, I don't know if uh, we, we have finished. The, it was a, a big rush for us. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>